Hey y'all, it's Andrew Couch here, and this Tire Tuesday video, we're going to be forecasting the U.S. election. It is a presidential election year, and we will be voting um, basically next week on Tuesday. So um, I would highly encourage you guys to, you know, turn out and vote. Um, a little um, background for me is how I actually got into data and statistics was through politics. So in high school, I was taking a stats class. So we were doing a lot of uh, studying like p-values and confidence intervals. And this was during basically the 2016 election too. So I was interested in basically reading polling data. And that's kind of how I got into data science. Um, I actually was for, uh, following mostly uh, 538 forecasts, which they have a nice little page showing their own forecast for this presidential election. But what's really cool about The Economist is they have all of their models on their GitHub repo, so it's public information. Um, I wanted to make a model from scratch in Stan and doing some um, adjustments what I thought what the model should have been done, specifically with like how they uh, address like fatter tails and dealing with correlation between states. But uh, I think that's a little out of the scope for this video, and it would take a decent amount of time, and I wanted to get a video about election modeling uh, before the election. So luckily, Elliot Morris, who is basically kind of like one of the main people behind the the Economist's uh, forecast, he has a election simulator um, in his own repo, which will basically simulate error with the polls and then use that um, poll results to output some um, some results for each states, and then you do some simulations through it. Um, I will also say I really like the Economist's uh, forecasts. Um, Andrew Gelman uh, or Gillum, uh, he is also a, a person who worked on this forecast, and um, Andrew is definitely kind of like the godfather of modern Bayesian statistics. Who I think he helped write Stan and, and all those um, cool Bayesian models, uh, modeling languages. So I thought it'd be cool to make this uh, video on the election forecast. So I basically, we're not gonna be rewriting this entire thing. So I basically copy and pasted it into a R markdown file. And I thought it'd be interesting to just kind of um, explain what this polling simulator is doing, okay? So first we have all this data where it's essentially reading in polling data, some results from the election, um, some coefficients from the states, um, state electoral vote um, results, et cetera. So we're going to load that in. I'm also going to load in these packages. The main packages we're going to be using is mostly the Tidyverse um, and GLNet. So GLNet and Carrot um, are, you know, the previous ML packages, but they use Carrot because um, we can actually use, do some more things that Tidy models cannot do. So once we load it in our data, which basically just has our polling data, our state results, um, some weights that they calculated using our state results from like the national vote. Um, so it's nothing too crazy. Um, we also have like the electoral votes for each state. And then I had this thing called parameters. So these are the parameters um, that we're gonna be entering into our simulation. Most of it is just like, you know, when did we run this um, standard deviation? And then they kind of calculate the standard deviations that we're gonna be applying to our uh, simulator. We also have like a num cores, which will detect uh, the amount of cores we have in our computer. Nothing too crazy. So the data wrangling part is kind of the main thing. And we're really just trying to extract um, some, some um, ideas about the polls. So we have our days till election, our start date. And it's essentially just applying this and giving some weights to our observations for our polls. So you can see right here, it just does some basic filtering. It's saying that we want polls that are before our, our run date for this model, which is today. Just some basic uh, data munging, converting the date to a month, year, month day, year. Um, removing any uh, missing values for Biden or Trump uh, polls. And then it gives a weight based off the number of observations. Okay. So if they have a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of people, I'm going to be heavily weighted, uh, which is good for uh, polls. Generally, you want more people. Then we had this thing that uh, basically averages the polls out. So it has this uh, decay on it. Um, and it's basically just kind of uh, going through it, 
kind of doing a sliding window and averaging out the poll results and then extracting the, the average uh, margin. So it applies this actual averaging out um, into a national poll average. Then just filter some dates. Um, again, calculate state averages, nothing too crazy. It, it does calculate a margin per, based off their um, polling differences. And then we have a decayed weight, which is you know the days till um, our, our run date. Then it summarizes it all up, you know, counts the number of polls, averages the margin, gets the weights. Okay, so then we have all our results from our 2016 election. Nothing too crazy. Um, we have a po some polls too, where it's like our average, uh, what's the average margin for each poll, um, the weights, uh, the, the lean for each state. So it's saying that if Clinton, you know, won this, uh, say, let's say if Clinton won Michigan, uh, then it would weight the, uh, the lean towards it um, from the previous elections. So nothing too crazy. Um, just a little bit more tactical and more intuition if you know like some poli sci and know about polling and what happened in the elections. So the one of the big things is it actually uses a stepwise linear model. Um, so it's essentially using these variables, um, making a model, um, removing it, and calculating like the AIC scores, and then figuring out which one has the best score for that. Uh, I don't. I'm pretty sure it's backwards, or it might be step uh, uh, forward, but I'm pretty sure it's backwards. Um, so it does that um, with to basically estimate the coefficients for like percentiles of of your demographics. So those will be kind of our weights for our demographics. Okay. Then it has a test set where it's doing the same thing. Is just training uh, a GLM net model using um, the uh, the polling data. Lastly, it basically you predicts um, the margin using these um, uh, demographic effects, and then it takes the average between a you know a stepwise GLM net model and then a regular GLM net model, and then it pulls that prediction. Okay, so once it does that, it essentially just uh, creates some weights. We have the complement of the Parson weight, and then it takes a pred. So it's saying like we're going to take our our margin, multiply it by our weight, and then we're going to add this type of little um, um, the lean based margin times the partisan weight. So it's basically trying to measure um, like how Republican or how a Democratic a state is as a prior. Then it's going to make some projections right here. So it's just going to assign our pred to this other tibble. It's going to average out our state um, polling going to do a slight adjustment to it by taking out the average and then it's going to uh, apply a weighted mean to it now it's going to basically just uh what this uh function does it'll basically um try to convert some of the state um values to the national or to the united states average which is not too crazy uh it uses some optimization to figure out the best way to do it um so like the best weight to add to shift it. Um, let's see what else does it do. Saves the margin. And then finally, it just combines them together until we have this data set. Uh, now we're actually going to reach the simulation. So if you saw our prior stuff, it's essentially just calculating and estimating weights um, to add and also how we can shift these polling data to, say, like a national margin, which is pretty useful. And it's pretty... Uh, uh, it's something what a lot of pollsters will do anyways, and it's something that is pretty straightforward. Obviously, um, they put a lot of thought into it, but um, the general idea and intuition is be is pretty simple to get what they're trying to do. Then what they're going to do is basically simulate the errors for all the polls. So we have like national error poll, uh, regional error, and state error. And now we're actually going to reach the simulation part. So the simulation part is, is it's essentially going to say that um, we have a certain amount of simulations. We're going to assume our national error is zero. And then we're going to give it our uh, national error as our standard deviation and repeat that many times for however many simulations we want. So it's going to do that for all three um, hierarchies, national, regional, and state. And then what it's going to do is it's essentially going to um, take those um, simulated errors and then 
uh, basically join them with our, st our, our polling data. So once it does that, uh, it's gonna basically uh, join them together. So it's gonna join the uh, errors and it's gonna add the errors to the margins. Then it's gonna take out all of the simulations or errors, and then it's gonna summarize it. Lastly, I actually created a function that'll, that basically uses the past stuff um, so we can feed it in um, a range of national errors. So if we want to, if we're saying that uh, we think that our state errors are going to be um, off by more than just 0 0.03 for the standard deviation, we can, we're able to pass in a, a list of errors. So I could say, like, okay, maybe I, so if I uh, pass in like 0 0.01 instead of 0 0.03, we're saying that uh, state errors will not be as bad. and It'll probably be closer to be more accurate. Or we can give it 0.05, which, was, which is basically assuming that state error will be more inaccurate. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Um, I'm going to, I think I might have ran this, but I'm just going to run it. And it's a pretty fast, uh, um, pretty fast script. So I'm just going to do that. I'm going to let it go. And we're going to let it run. Okay. So right now it's training up the model. It's going through it. Okay, cool. So now we ran that. It was pretty fast. And what we can look at is um, right here, I essentially um, X calculated. Actually, we, we just go through it. So essentially, I just did um, this part. I'm trying to figure out. Um, the essentially the electoral votes per state. So what I'm saying is if the state margin is greater than zero, then we assume that Biden won it. Else, uh, Trump won it. We do a pivot wider. So now we have basically like a one hot encoded uh, state margin. So for uh, Arkansas, um, our total individual uh, state votes is three, whereas Biden lost that state, so it's zero. I group by the draw which is essentially a simulation. And I basically uh, summarize all that stuff up. So essentially what we're saying is for each simulation, what are the total electoral votes each candidate received? Okay, and then I do some conditions. So if, uh, if the Trump state is zero, that means Biden won it, else Trump won it. Um, same thing with the election. So I'm saying if, uh, uh, if Biden got at least 270 electoral votes, then Biden won it. Okay. I then selected this stuff. So I'm just saying like for this simulation, uh, for Arkansas, Trump won the state, but in the actual simulation, Biden won the election. I did a group by for each state and then counted um, each individual component. I then uh, computed the proportion for each conditional state and I ungrouped it. And what I'm basically trying to figure out is say for example, Florida, which is uh, generally considered as a tipping point state is, um, what's the probability of Biden winning the election if he's won the state? Okay, so in all the simulations, we basically counted out all the outcomes, whether Trump or Biden won the state and whether Trump or Biden won the election. And we also have the cross tabs of it. So in this example, we can see that if Biden wins Florida, Biden has an 89% chance of winning the election. As you can see with Trump, if Trump were to win the state, then Trump would still have a very low chance of winning the election. And that's because this is a polling based model with no other um, prior effects. So we don't have any like incumbent effects. We don't have any um, auto correlation effects, et cetera, et cetera. So what we can also look at is just basically just the actual um, electoral votes. So let's go back here and I'm just going to um, Grab that, and we can do this. So with um, we can just uh, what's here? We can we can uh, select the uh, draw Trump uh, national, and then Biden national, and then we can just kind of gg. We can just do a was it a a pivot longer minus draw. And then we can ggplot the results out. So x equals value. Uh, color equals 
name, and then we do a geom like uh, density. Okay, and then we can see how with the electoral votes. Ooh, actually, we can do a. Uh, we see with this simulation, we give Biden a uh, most time Biden will win this election. In fact, in the uh, lower end tails, um, it, we would have to see a an anomaly basically, for um, for Biden to lose. All right, so um, we can do one more thing. Um, we can kind of look at all of the conditional probabilities of each state. So we can do that. And then we can say, we can figure out what are the more important states for each candidate. So let's say filter Juan election is equal to Biden. Okay, and then we can see like arrange uh, Juan state. So now we can see what are the states um, that result into Biden winning. So we can then arrange it by prob uh, descending in prob. So we can see most of these states, uh, we expect Biden to win it. Um, we can allow, say, like West Virginia and uh, a Wyoming for Trump to win. But let's look at, say, the, the main states that we would expect. So in this case, we would say filter, let's say... Uh, State is in C, Florida, Iowa, um, Ohio, Pennsylvania, right? And now we can say like arrange by uh, descending order and prob. Okay, so right here we can see that generally Biden will always have the highest probability of winning the election. In in reality, what Bi what Trump really needs to do is he needs to win Ohio and Florida. Because if we do a, another filter, say filter one EU election is equal to Trump, we see the states that are basically imperative for him to win are Ohio and Florida and o Iowa. So Trump will need to win these three states to actually win the election. Okay. Let's do one more brief look at our stuff and just say... Um, we can say, like, uh, for Biden, let's look at what are the states that he can lose. So, one state is equal to Trump that he can, like, uh, be fine with. And then one election is equal to Biden. So, I'm saying we are, we are only keeping the states where Biden wins the election. And then we also want to figure out the states that um, Trump won. Okay. And maybe we can just say arrange by descending order and prob. Okay, so what we can do basically is allow Trump to win West Virginia, Wyoming, Oklahoma, North Dakota, Kentucky. Uh, um, oh, was it? Was it Arizona? Arizona, Idaho, Alabama, uh, South Dakota. So we can see that this is pretty, um, this is what we would expect for it, right? Obviously, there's going to be some weird tales where, you know, we're fine with Trump winning Illinois, when in reality, it is unrealistic for Trump to win Illinois. But since we're doing simulations, we can allow these one-time anomalies. I know this is a pretty quick video, but I thought this was a pretty interesting uh, um, GitHub repo. So I wanted to share it to you guys. I will also be posting um, this file with all the data. So you guys can mess with it yourself. I think an interesting project would be maybe making a shiny dashboard using the simulations. But um, I'll see you guys next week. Make sure to vote and tidy on.